All right, welcome. Good morning. Uh, we're glad that you have uh, joined us this morning. Going to take just a couple of minutes while people find us and get logged in uh, today to join us. So, uh, uh, you know, weather is the weather is so hard to try to figure out what to do. It was raining all morning from the time I got up at six o'clock. It kept raining. The weather app on my phone. Uh, said rain ending in your area at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, I waited, and at eight <clears throat> at 8.25, it was still raining at my house, which is about two miles from the church. So I made the call to go inside uh, since we don't have any kind of covering outside to put our electronic equipment under. So kind of a mad dash. I hope, Eastgate folks, I hope that you got a phone call uh, this morning that had my voice explaining what was going on. If you did not get that phone call, please reach out to me this afternoon and let me know because we need to check into why you didn't get uh, you didn't get that phone call. Uh, so, uh, all right, welcome and God bless you. Uh, hopefully, everybody is finding their way to our live stream this morning. We're going to open with a word of prayer. Let's uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity once again to share your word today, Lord. We just ask that over the next hour or so that you would be with us, that you would guide and direct and keep us today, Lord, that your hand would be upon us this morning. Bless uh, this uh, technology that we have to use today to get the message across, Lord. We just pray that you would bless and strengthen today, God, uh, each one that's listening today. Lord, be in every home, every gathering where folks are watching this at the live hour at 10 o'clock or as happens every Sunday, all during the afternoon when people view it at later times. We just ask that your presence would be there and that you would fill us all with the spirit of expectation, hope, and joy that comes from the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. All right. We were supposed to be outside, so I did not prepare slides for you today, so there's no screen in front of you. Uh, so you may need to actually go get your Bible <laughs> or log on to your electronic Bible this morning. I think I picked some songs that maybe everybody knows, but if you don't know the words, let's try to worship together for a few minutes uh, uh, regardless. This first one is an old one. Here I am to worship. You're probably very familiar. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Thank you, Jesus. King of all days, oh, so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. So here I am. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Down here. that cross I'll never know 
how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. Here I am to worship. Here I am. batteries just died in my handheld so we're going to try to keep or in my pocket mic so we're going to keep going here. when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. Satan should buffet, the trial should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood. in all the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. my 
soul. Lord, we praise you this morning. We just worship you for just a moment this morning because this world is in trouble. This world is in chaos. But God, we are well today. We are secure in you and nothing has changed, Lord. Nothing has changed. You're still on the throne this morning. You're still in control. Our names are still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Holy Spirit is still living in us and through us. We're still empowered to go out and make a difference in this world. Your word is still true. Your promises are still yes and amen. So we can say in the midst of economic uncertainty, it is well. And we can say in the midst of governmental uncertainty, we can say it is well. We can say in the midst of health crisis, it is well with my soul. Lord, we praise you this morning, God, because everything is all right with us because you are in charge. We're not fearful. We're not afraid. We worship you this morning, God, in spirit and in truth from living rooms and houses and apartments and automobiles, wherever we're at this morning, Lord, spread across this city, spread across this part of Ohio, Lord, we are praising you and we're worshiping you because you have promised that everything is all right and that we're all secure in you. Your promises are still yes and amen. So it is well. I say it is well with my soul. In Jesus' name. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One last song this morning before we move into prayer time. Our God. Our God. The water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you There's none like you Into the darkness you shine And out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you there's none like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. God, you are healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. We praise you this morning, Lord. You are awesome, high, strong, mighty. You are God, our healer. You are God, our provider. And we praise you. The water you turned into wine. And opened the sight of the blind. There's no one like you. <laughs> There's none like you. And through the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, there's none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and thank you, Lord, God, you're healing this morning and working today in ways we don't even anticipate or understand. You're in charge today, God. You're awesome in our lives today, God. We yield to your plan and your will for us today, God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? 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 What could stand
What could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? What? Thank you, Lord. There's no power on earth that can stand against your church because you have declared it to be so. Because we are on your side and we are victorious. We're conquerors through Christ. Mighty through God, we praise you this morning, Lord. It's we worship you today, Jesus. You are good and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to move right from worship this morning right into some prayer time. Um, I have a <clears throat> sort of a lengthy prayer list this morning. I'm going to go over real quickly, and then I'm going to ask you to help me to help me pray. If you are online, uh, uh, Harold posted a much more lengthy prayer list than this one on our Facebook page, and you can uh, you can find that there. Continue to pray for Charlotte. She's, I believe, doing very well in her recovery, but we're praying for complete healing from the broken bone and the, uh, and the surgery, and also uh, pray for Richard as well. He needs healing in his back. Ruth Mance is uh, still in need of healing for back pain in her body. Elizabeth Kirkland asked us to continue to pray for her. She's just got a lot going on on in her body and she needs healing and strength. Uh, Marie Felty has asked for the church to remember her for strength and healing. Uh, uh, Charlotte uh, has asked prayer for uh, her daughter and daughter-in-law's aunt and uncle who have the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, COVID-19 virus. So uh, Charlotte's daughter-in-law's aunt and uncle to remember them. Uh, Jackie's granddad is still in rehab, and we want to continue to pray for him. Uh, Leticia's mother, Elizabeth, uh, continues to need prayer. I don't think that she's doing very well right now. I believe that was the word we got last night or yesterday sometime. So let's remember uh, Elizabeth, uh, Leticia's mom. Fred called me a few minutes ago before we started, and he asked us to please pray for his daughter, uh, Teresa Sklinner. She, uh, she had some surgery a little while back and is having some difficulty. I think it was shoulder surgery maybe. And so uh, we want to. he asked us to please have the church pray for his daughter, Teresa. So those are the prayer requests that I have. Uh, I'm sure you have other needs. Uh, so let's just take a moment right now to go to the Lord in prayer today. Would you join in with me right now? Heavenly Father, we know that you are the healer. We just sang about our God is God stronger our God is mighty our God is higher than any other Lord you are healer Lord we know this morning that you're able to meet each and every one of these needs today father you're able to touch everyone that we have called out by name today Fred's daughter Teresa for healing in her body God there's so many things uh, that uh, only you can do so Lord touch her today we pray Lord for Charlotte for healing completely from head to toe in her body strength returning to her again Lord, that you would cause the bone to knit back together correctly and strong. There would be no infection in her body that this uh, virus diagnosis of a couple of weeks ago, God just continues to, to go the way of no sign, no symptoms, no problems, and that she is, is remaining healthy and clear. We pray, God, for her, uh, uh, the request that she had for the man and the woman who have both been diagnosed with the covid uh, 19 virus, her daughter-in-law's aunt and uncle, for healing and strength in their lives. We pray for Elizabeth, uh, Leticia's mom. God, we pray for her healing. We pray for healing this morning for Elizabeth Kirkland and Ruth Mance and uh, Marie Pearl Felty this morning. God, we pray this morning for each of them. Uh, God, Elizabeth Kirkland needs a touch in body today. Father, we pray that 
you would touch uh, Ben and Kathy as they are in isolation right now because of a possible exposure, Lord, uh, to the virus, that you would just continue to protect them. They would continue to be whole and healthy and no problems in their lives, uh, no, no, no sickness, God, that you would just watch over. Lord, now as we all get ready, many folks getting ready to began to, to be out more and to go more and to do more because of, of uh, the, this stage of, that we're in with the uh, restarting of the economy of Ohio. Lord, we just pray for your protection and your hand to be upon us. Wisdom would reign from Donald Trump at the, uh, in the president of the United States Oval Office all the way down here to Ohio. Governor DeWine and his advisors, the, the, the mayors and the local leaders of our municipalities, Lord, and every pastor of every church that's trying to make the right, the right choices and the right direction for everybody Everybody involved in their church and also in their communities. God, we just pray that you would give wisdom and direction and leadership this morning, God, that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done on right here at Eastgate as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. All right. So uh, let me just say. I am ready to not to have to depend on all this technology every week just so that somebody might be able to <laughs> to uh, to connect and, and hear. Uh, I'm ready to have all of you back in the uh, in the seats here <clears throat> at the church, and uh, we're hopefully very close to that. We're hopefully very close. Um, I am doing my very best to be amenable to. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, the way I feel the Lord directing me as the pastor of this church, but also to be amenable to what my pastor uh, and his pastor and those that are over me in spiritual authority have requested. So I believe we're very, very close to being able to open, unlock the door and say, come on in and let's have church again all in the building instead of all in our living rooms. <laughs> and so uh, keep praying and uh, just believing that... that uh, that God's going to touch and going to move, and that when we do come back together, <clears throat> all of you that have said, I'm looking forward to being back in church, and many of you have, have talked to me about that, that first Sunday that we're all back together, I expect you to come and have church like the seat of your pants is on fire, like you're just so excited to be here. It ought to be the most spiritual service that we've had since I've been your pastor because everybody's going to be so excited to be back in the house of the Lord again. You're just going to let your hair down and just go to town, have church on that first time back. So, all right. Um, I really don't have any announcements to make other than two very quick ones. Number one, if you did not get a letter in the mail from me and, and you consider Eastgate to be your home church, I realize that some are watching this on the internet that, are, that, that do not consider Eastgate their home church, but if this is where you attend when, when the stay-at-home order is lifted, uh, if you did not get a letter, if you did not get a letter Please, please, please call me or text me or something after 12 o'clock today because if you didn't get a letter, it means either one, we do not have your address or number two, the one we have for you is incorrect because I sent out a letter to every household that I have on the list <clears throat> on Wednesday morning and so if you didn't get one, there's a problem and we want to address it because we want to keep you in the loop, you're important to us. The second thing is, mark it on your calendar and plan that on Sunday the 17th at 10 a.m., we're going to have worship service at the church. So plan on being back. There's not going to be Sunday school, uh, and at this point, we're not able to open back up our children's church or nursery yet, but we're going to have uh, church in the sanctuary on the 17th at 10 o'clock. Uh, so I hope that you'll mark it on your calendar and plan on being here uh, for that day. All right, so Matthew chapter 26 is where we are going to be ministering this morning for a few minutes from the Word. <clears throat> Matthew 26. As you're turning to Matthew 26, I want to ask you a question. Uh, 
Yeah, you'll have to either get your tablet out and locate it yourself, or you'll have to get the old actual printed ink and paper Bible and look it up. We don't have uh, slides available today, so we're doing it kind of the old-fashioned way. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been hurt by somebody? Well, that's a silly question because if you're a human being, you've been hurt by somebody. And more often than not, it's you get hurt by somebody that you care about. Uh, you know, there's an old song from, from years back, you always hurt the one you love. <clears throat> We've all been hurt by people. This morning, the message that the Lord dropped into my heart on Thursday, uh, earlier this week on Monday, I got everything ready for Sunday, all right? And I had a message that I thought was the one for today. Thursday afternoon, the Holy Spirit completely changed my direction, and, and I, I'm absolutely certain that this is the message that is supposed to go out. I believe there's something in here for everybody, but I believe there are some people who are going to hear this this morning that this is specifically for something that you're dealing with right now or something that's going on. I believe that God has given a word of, of knowledge uh, and that God is, is intending to uh, to, to bring some restoration and some healing in your life. For everybody else, if maybe you're not dealing with an issue right now, then take this information and let the Holy Spirit plant it deep in your heart so that when you are confronted, when you are facing this type of situation, you'll have resources ready to draw from. Matthew chapter number 26, dropping all the way down to verse number 47. While Jesus yet spake... <clears throat> While Jesus yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed Jesus gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to, Ju to Jesus and Judas said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand, drew his sword, and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into thy place, for all they that take the sword shall perish by the sword. Thinkest thou that I came now pray to my Father? I'm sorry, let me read verse 53 again. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the Scripture be fulfilled that thus it must be. Thank you for your scripture, Lord. Help me to minister the message in a way that is your words to your people today, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In uh, Luke's version of this story, Luke adds the detail that Jesus uh, took the ear that had been severed and, and healed uh, this fellow. Uh, <clears throat> in John's version of the story, <laughs> you know, Matthew and, and Luke don't name either the man who got his ear cut off or the follower of Jesus that did the cutting, right? But John just says, well, it was Simon Peter that took the sword, and it was this fellow named Malchus that he chopped his ear off. So when you take all three of those uh, stories, it gives you a more complete and full picture. So they were out there, uh, Jesus had just been praying, the disciples had been sleeping, and here comes a crowd with swords and staves, and, and they come out to, to take Jesus in the darkness of the night, led by Judas, and Judas comes up to Jesus and betrays him with the, with the betrayer's kiss, uh, identifying which one was Jesus, and uh, as they were coming to seize him, uh, Peter took a sword that that was uh, available, and uh, Peter swung that sword and, and chopped off a servant's ear. Now, it wasn't even one of the soldiers, 
You know, it wasn't one of the temple guard or the temple police. It was this fellow by the name of Malchus, just one of the servants of the, uh, of the high priest. Uh, and, and Peter lopped off his ear uh, with the sword there in this story. So let me go back to the question I asked you at the beginning. Have you been hurt by somebody? The thought that the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart today for, or, uh, for today is this. The wrong end of the sword. Every one of us, if we're really honest about this, every one of us have been hurt by other people. I have. <clears throat> I have been hurt by family members. I've been hurt by uh, friends. I've been hurt by fellow church members. I've been hurt by employers. We've been hurt by people. But I've got to also turn that around and say I've been on the other end of the sword and I've done my fair share of hurting of other people as well. As a family member, as a pastor, as an employee, whatever, I've also done some damage and I have hurt people uh, as well. I want to look at a few of the these moments this morning, and I want to I want to deal for just a few minutes with this subject of of hurt, because folks, uh, it is not the case that that you just have to say, "Well, I got to act like nothing's wrong. I've got to just buck up. Uh, I've just got to just grow up," uh, because you know, I, the Lord cares about the things that hurt you. When someone betrays you, when someone says hurtful things to you, when someone acts in such a way to cause physical, mental uh, pain in your life, the Lord cares about those things. Sometimes other human beings don't seem to be very, uh, 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 very much concerned about those things. But I want to tell you something. The Heavenly Father cares about your body. He cares about your soul and he cares about your spirit. And when something is hurting you, God has a plan and God is able to bring healing into your life like nobody else can. Your friends, your family members, you know, God made us in his image, right? And in my life, when I was little and I would get hurt, I, I wanted to be in mom's lap, you know. I wanted to go find mom. There was somehow, some way that mom uh, comforting you made the, the scraped knee or the scraped elbow or, or the, the finger that you, you know, jammed in some way, made it, made it feel better, right? Uh, and so mom, mom cared and, and mom was concerned about her children. The heavenly father is concerned about the things that concern you and so when the enemy comes in like a flood and he brings hurt and he brings confusion and anxiety and worry your way God doesn't want you to just try to deal with that hurt but he wants you to bring your hurt to, to him and also want to tell you that in those instances some of the instances I regret the most in my life are, are instances where I have been the one like Simon Peter who've been swinging the sword and have hurt people many times un, un, un need, uh, you know, uh, it's unintentional and sometimes almost always unneedful for me to hurt them in that way. So let's move on into the, to the crux of this. Pastor, why, why, are you, why are you talking about this so much? Number one, I believe firmly that the Holy Spirit directed me to speak on this topic today. Number two, as a pastor for 20-something years now, I have seen too many, friend, too many friendships damaged severely and often permanently because of, of interpersonal problems. People who had hurt one another and didn't deal with it, and it led to complete destruction of that relationship. I've seen too many church or too many ministry decisions made out of hurt feelings. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, I'm just going to leave. Well, I'm just going to go somewhere else because they're hurt and they're not dealing with the hurt in the right way. I've seen personal decisions made without wisdom or thought, but right out of emotion, you know. I'm just going to do this because I'm in my feelings right now. So first of all, let's take a look very quickly this morning at three people in this story. The first one is Malchus. The first one is the guy who got his ear lopped off by Simon Peter. Malchus, his hurt was a matter of, uh, you know, of, of trust, first of all. Well, what do you mean by that? The Scripture simply says that he was a servant of the high priest. So in other words, he was not there by choice, I'm certain. 
if you read between the lines, but, but Malchus would have just been there because he was ordered to be there. A servant of the high priest, he had to go because the high priest sent him. And so he's just doing his duty, doing his job, going along. Not The scripture doesn't say that he was one of the ones that was attacking Jesus or grabbing Jesus or anything. He was just there in the crowd and he happened to be too close to Simon Peter and there there we go. Simon Peter strikes out. Folks, very often our hurts come just that way. They come just we're going about our duties, we're going about our life, we're going about things. We just showed up to work, we showed up to church, we showed up to a family gathering or whatever it was. We're just going about our normal day. We're just there because we're supposed to be there and bam, suddenly there's a pain, there, there's a, an attack that comes our way. Something happens that causes pain in our life. And while we may giggle about Malchus getting his ear cut off, and we know that in just a moment the Lord is going to heal him, there's very real pain and very real suffering that went into that process. I do not want you to feel uh, left out or not left out, but diminished because other people look at what happened to you and think, oh, well, that's nothing. They just need to buck up. They just need to grow up. They just need to get over that. They just need to, uh, you know, rub some dirt on it and, and, and go on, you know, be, be tough, be big. <clears throat> Only you know how badly and how deeply the wounds that come from other people. So my, my message this morning is not to diminish what's going on in your life. My message this morning is, is to get you some, some help for what's going on. The greater our expectation of somebody is, the more the wound from them will hurt and drive down deep. You know, you expect great things of your dad and, and you see him be just a little bit human and a little bit less perfect than what you had drawn up in your mind and it, it hurts, it wounds us. Or you have a friend that you thought was your absolute best friend in the world and, and they say something or do something that hurts you in some way. David would say it like this in, in Psalm 41. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, someone who shared my bread has turned against me. Some of the biggest sources of pain that we ever face are from people who we would have never expected to hurt us at all. Peter was quite close to Jesus. Peter had a calling on his life. You remember what, if you back up a little bit, you remember what Jesus had said to Peter not long before this happened? Peter Satan desires to have you so that he can sift you like grain, but I have prayed for you that when the testing comes, your faith won't fail. Peter had a calling on his life. Uh, Peter, uh, you go even further back than that, and there was a moment when Jesus spoke to Simon Peter and said, lay down your nets and come and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Peter was walking with a calling on his life, yet he's the one. It was Peter who was the one who, when Jesus was talking about giving up his life and dying, Peter's the one who said, oh, no, Lord, not you. No, that's, that's not for you, Lord. And, and Jesus had to turn to Peter and say, get behind me, Satan. The wounds that we get sometimes come from those that are the closest to us. Uh, think about that in your, in your own life. Why do you think that is? Well, it's because, number one, those are the closest to us. We're around them the most. But then, secondly, somebody that you don't care about, somebody that you have no relationship about, it's really hard for them to hurt you by the things that they might say or do because there's no relationship there. But when you've built trust and love with somebody and you've spent time with them, David could talk about... Uh, one of his advisors who sat at the table with him every day and advised him and, and he thought was helping him. And then when his son, when David's son led the, the, uh, the coup to, to drive David out, this trusted advisor sided with his son. And that's who David was writing about uh, there in Psalm 41 and said, my close friend has even chosen to go uh, against me and to go another way. Malchus' hurt was a matter of timing. This is what I kind of got into a minute ago. He was just at the wrong place 
at the wrong time. He didn't see it coming. Can I tell you that that's what happens? Since there's no screen down here, I can come down and, and talk to you a little bit. Uh, I m probably messed up the camera. You probably can't see me anymore. I better go back up there. <laughs> I forget. I got to get back where I can move around again. I feel so constrained at standing right here behind this uh, pulpit, but my wife just shot me a dirty look when I moved because she was going to have to. <laughs> I'm joking. She smiled a very big smile at me when I moved off the pulpit there. I heard as a matter of timing, you know, a lot of times the most painful moments in life are the most unpredictable. <sighs> what do you mean, preacher? You're just sitting at the house as a, as a pastor and you think things are going very well and the phone rings and you answer the phone and it's somebody on the other end who says, well, pastor, me and the wife have been thinking about it and we've been praying and we just called to let you know that uh, we're not coming back to church. Bam. You know, that's just a, a personal experience. To, to illustrate what I'm saying, that it's just a, there's no way to prepare for that kind of hurt. And as a pastor, you know, this pastor, it hurts when somebody says we're leaving the church for ministry or we're leaving the church to go somewhere else or we're leaving the church because we're mad at you. All of those things carry their own degree of hurt, and you can't prepare for them, and it hurts to hear those things. But that that's just an illustration of how so often, right? You go into work and you think things are going well and the boss calls you into his office and says, we don't need you anymore. Uh, you know, here, here uh, you're, you're done. Just clean out your desk and go on home. Unexpected hurt, unexpected pain, or, you know, a friend who says something just spur of the moment. You happen to, uh, to, to hear a friend talking to another friend and they're talking bad about you and you can't prepare for that stuff. It just happens to us. When Malchus was injured, well, you know what? Sometimes the most painful wounds that come so unexpectedly, we thought things were going well in our lives. We were blessed because uh, God had, had blessed Rhonda with a, another pregnancy and we were going to have our second child and things were going well. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, suddenly we get the news uh, several weeks later that you know, that there'd been a miscarriage. And so uh, that was sudden, and it was unexpected, and it was hurtful. But what we didn't realize was that just a little while later, that unexpected hurt, that unexpected pain was going to put us in a position where we could reach out through the foster system uh, to some kids who needed a home and needed a place and needed a family. And so uh, while we didn't have the biological child that was our heart's desire, God was able to position us through that to show <clears throat> love and concern and compassion to somebody else. So what I'm saying is many times that moment of pain, that moment of difficulty that you go through, the sudden illness that takes you out of your normal routine, the, the, the closing down of our church services to, to live attendance in, in the building, uh, the, the friend who wounds you, uh, the issue at work, many times, brother or sister in Christ, many times that wound that comes... If you'll just hold on for just a little bit, there's about to be some kind of wonderful breakthrough, wonderful victory that's just about to come. You see, Malchus was injured just, just a few days before the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Malchus was injured just a few moments before Jesus would take his severed ear in his hand and heal him right there I don't know, I've never read any history on this, but Travis George, my personal belief is that Malchus became a believer in Christ because of what he saw and, and what he experienced. I can't back that up with Scripture, so I'm not preaching that as absolute truth. It's just, that's just what I think. Regardless, this pain that he went through, just a few moments later, he experiences a miracle of a healing. All this event that that the disciples are going through, the darkness of night, the, 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 the taking away of Jesus by the crowd, the, 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 the mock trials that they make Jesus go through, all of that stuff is just a few days before the greatest event that the world would ever see, the empty tomb and the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you, hard things come, hurtful things come. It happens in our bodies, it happens in our relationships, but I'm just speaking a word of knowledge over 
over you right now uh, a word of wisdom that comes from experience. Uh, if you'll just hold on, every one of those wounds, every one of those pains, there's something good that's coming very soon into your life, brother and sister in Christ. If you'll just hold on, you first got to go through the den of lions before you can see the miraculous deliverance. First, you got to face the fiery flames of the furnace before you can have Jesus walking around in the midst of the fire with you. First, you got to be willing to stand up and not bow down to the statue before you can see God deliver you, you know, from that situation. First, you got to stand at the bank of the sea and lift up your hand uh, and trust as God would say just just wait and see just just stand still and see that I'm God and Moses held up his hand and held up his staff and all night long a wind blew the water back and the people of Israel were able to walk across the Red Sea on dry ground every one of those situations a hurtful thing happened but only to precursor a great time of victory that was just about to happen I want to tell you, folks, it has been difficult over the last six, seven weeks to, to do church in a completely different way. But I am fully expecting out of the ashes, as we sang about in that song, Our God, out of the ashes we rise. I'm fully expecting that when we come back together, I said it as a joke earlier, but I really have an expectation in my heart that when we come back together as a church, the spiritual fervor and the excitement and the passion for the things of God, we better not take another Sunday for granted. We better not take another opportunity to meet in the Lord's house for granted, but we better get in and Dig those potatoes, buddy. We better get busy. We better do the work of the kingdom of God because God is bringing us a great time. I'm expecting to see people healed, saved, set free, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost when we get back together again because we have not gone through this valley of darkness for no reason. But there will be a victory. i got to move on. I'm excited about that. I, I, I Remember, whatever the source of your hurt Jesus can heal you. Mental anguish because of things that have been said or done to you. Physical pain in your body. Spiritual troubles. I know the Lord can make a way for you. He can heal you of all of those things. Let me pray for you right now. God, heal every mind that has been wounded by an, an attack or a, a word or something hurtful that has been done. Heal every mind. Heal every spirit of the, the wounds that have taken place in church or by other Christian brothers or sisters or spiritual leaders. Lord, heal every wound this morning, God. Heal every wound in the body where things have actually been done that have hurt us physically. We've fallen. We, we, we've, we've, uh, uh, we've injured ourselves in some way or, or someone has injured us. And God, you're able to heal today because there's an adversary out there and he attacks bodies and he attacks souls and he attacks our spirit. And so God, bring healing into your people today. The second person I want to talk about very quickly is the swordsman. I talked about the servant. Let's talk about the swordsman, Peter, Simon Peter. I honestly think Peter's intentions here were good, but his actions were just a nightmare. <laughs> I want to speak to those of us that have been the swordsman this morning. We've been like Simon Peter. We've caused pain. We're the person who's caused the hurt. Matthew 26, verse 36. All the way down through 46. I'm not going to take the time to read all those scriptures. Let me summarize. 26, Matthew 26, verses 36 through 46. Jesus goes to the garden. They've just had the Last Supper. They go out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus leaves some of the disciples in one spot. And then he goes a little further further with Peter and, and James and John. And he says, you guys stay here. He's asked them to pray with him. He's asked them to pray for an hour with him. And then Jesus goes a little further still and begins to pray. He comes back. You know this story. It's been preached so many times. He comes back and he finds them all asleep. And he repeats this process a couple of times, right? Until he finally says, just go ahead and wake up. The time for prayer is over. Uh, Satan's hour has come. Right after Jesus tells them to get up, here comes this mob. Here comes this crowd. And in the midst of this crowd, Peter takes up the sword and attacks Malchus. 
So what I'm trying to tell you in that is, if we're not careful, we all have the tendency to hurt other people. And some of our most opportune moments to hurt other people is when we are not praying the way that we ought to be praying. If we're not spending the time in prayer, Jesus had taken his disciples out there and he asked them to pray for an hour. Folks, I, I want to believe a couple of things about that. I want to believe that, first of all, had they been awake and praying with Jesus during that hour, they might not have run away and scattered and been scared and been hiding, afraid for themselves, because they might have received an unction from the Holy Spirit to be bold and courageous and to stand with the Lord uh, during that time. But I also believe that maybe Simon Peter wouldn't have acted impulsively and picked up that sword and tried to chop off. What good would it have done had he struck a lethal blow on Malchus? One man with one sword against a mob, you know, Simon Peter would, would have been taken down fairly quickly, I'm sure. Plus, Jesus never told him to do that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Had Jesus said, defend me, take up the sword, then one man with one sword could have beat off the whole army. But Peter wasn't acting under Jesus' authority. He hadn't been praying. He hadn't been talking. He'd been snoozing. He just got woke up. An army's coming. He impulsively grabs a sword and tries to do something, right? And so, folks, what I'm trying to tell you is we must be very, very careful in our lives to be people of prayer because prayerlessness will have a negative impact on our relationships. You want your marriage to be better? Spend more time in prayer. You want church to be better when we come back together? Spend more time in prayer. You want your job to get better, the one that you currently have right now? Spend more time in prayer. You want to get along with those uh, uncooperative people that God has placed in your life? Spend more time in prayer. Oh, pastor, that's a pipe dream. I want to tell you, I have found through personal experience that it works. You see, we get... <clears throat> We get to trying to do things in our own, and we get selfish, and everybody is basically selfish because we're all sinful creatures because of the fall. The only way to overcome that basic selfish desire in us is to submit to the will of the Lord, and we don't submit to the will of the Lord very well unless we've been spending time talking to the Father and engaging in our prayer life. It's just like this. God did not intend... Well, he, he likens us to a body, and a body's got to be all joined together to work right. You can't take the pinky finger off and have it do anything by itself except die unless it's attached to the body. The thumb, as useful as it is, can't function unless it's attached to the hand. All right? So uh, he also said, Jesus also said, that you are branches and I am the vine. The vine can exist just fine without the branches because the vine is what is connected. The vine is the source. Cut the branch off, it's going to start to wither and die almost immediately. I, the last six or seven years, I've been growing tomato plants, and, and you go out and, and uh, do some pruning on the plant, and you can cut a vine off, and before you've gone very far down the line, pruning, pruning suckers, pruning unneeded branches off of your plant you look back at some of those you cut off a few minutes ago and the, the leaves are already withering and and showing that they've been cut off from the source the reason that there are so many i want to go down there so bad the reason there are so many problems in so many churches is because so many christians are not doing very much praying we're just existing in the flesh and trying to do what we do because we sang two praise songs on the way to church this morning or because we listened to a, a good preacher on american family radio uh, sometime during the week and, and so now we're going to try to exist and we're going to try to move as good as good preaching is and as good as good worship music is, it does not take the place of your primary language of prayer. It does not. It adds to and it supplements and it improves. But if you're not praying, folks, then you're out of the will of God. You have removed your connection to the vine and you're going, if you're not careful, you're going to be hurting other people. Why, Pastor? Because we need God's unlimited power. We need God's unlimited wisdom. We need God's unlimited provision. Wisdom, power, provision, all of those things are available, but they're only accessed through prayer. 
Jesus said, pray daily and ask daily for what you have need of. I better move on. We injure other people when we fail to pray. We injure other people when we fail to be obedient to the Lord. In Luke 22, verse 49, the scripture says, When they were about him, saw what would follow, they said, Lord, should we smite with the sword? All right, the disciples have all just been woke up from their slumber. They see the crowd coming with uh, torches and spears and staves are coming out to get Jesus. And they say, Lord, do you want us to take up the sword? They ask the question. And verse 50, one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear, his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. You see, they asked if they should strike with their swords, but Jesus didn't tell them to do it. When we choose to act without getting direction from the Lord, we run a big risk of hurting other people. We run a big risk of making a mess of things in our lives. People get hurt when we act without doing what the Lord wants us to do. It's often the people that are totally innocent who get hurt in those situations. Once again, I find this to work both ways. When we're not living in obedience, We're allowing our humanity to be in charge. And when we are fleshy, when we're allowing our humanity to be in charge, our emotions are more exposed and we get hurt by others more easily. So so let me say that one more time. When we're not living in obedience to God's word, then we're prone to hurt other people because we're living in disobedience and we're being selfish and we're allowing the flesh to to, to rise up. But also, when we're out of obedience to God's Word, our emotions, which are also part of our human nature, will be closer to the surface and we are much easier to take offense at what other people say or do uh, to us. So we're, it's easier for us to hurt somebody and it's easier for us to receive offense and to receive hurt. I think you can see that by this world that we're living in today. People that are out there that are apart from God and that are living these lives of open sin and rebellion, what do they talk about all the time? Well, that's offensive. Well, I take offense at that, that, you know, right? We hear that so much. Before all of this COVID-19 stuff dominated the news, it was somebody being offended about something all the time uh, on, on the news. When we choose to not pray, when we choose to not obey, or when we choose to stray, which maybe that's the same thing, but Matthew 26, verse 56, all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. If things are not right vertically between you and the Lord, then they can't be right horizontally. And if you're straying from what God wants you to do, the rest of your relationships are not going to line up. So now let's move on finally in the last few minutes to the Savior, Jesus. Jesus said in verse 53, Do you not think that I could not call out to the Heavenly Father and get more than 12 legions of angels to come and defend me? Peter, I don't need you to take that short sword and try to defend me against the mob because all I got to do is ask and the father would defend me because I am in the right place at the right time doing the right thing but this must happen this must go the way that it is going even in the midst of a bloody ear the Lord's will is still accomplished so so, so what are you trying to say pastor Peter acted impetuously. He acted out of the will of God. He didn't do what Jesus wanted him to do. But can I tell you, it did not stop Jesus from doing the will of the Father. All he did was simply take up the ear and heal him and then go on about doing what Jesus uh, was intending to do. We make messes. We mess up. We do the wrong thing. We say the wrong thing. We hurt other people and we get hurt by other people. We fail to pray as much as we ought to, or we don't obey as completely as we ought to. But can I tell you something? We serve a good, good Father, and He is able, even when we make messes, to work His will through our lives, even when we blow it. 
praise God, he's able to take our messes and make miracles out of them. He's able to take our, our, our disasters and provide a, a wonderful blessing out of them. He is a, when we allow it to go into the hands of the Lord because God is greater than your mess up. God is greater than, you know, oh, pastor, I've done things that have hurt people. I've said things that have hurt people, and I don't know that everything could ever be well again. God can heal. God can restore. God can make right. God can bring peace. God can do what nobody else can do. Look at this. There is nothing that has taken place that will change Jesus' plan. We didn't see COVID-19 coming. But it didn't change Jesus' plan. When I was laying out my plan for 2020 to the church back in February, we didn't see this coming, but it didn't change Jesus' plan. <laughs> I still believe the same as always that God intends to revive and rejuvenate and renew East Gate Assembly of God and to make Eastgate a power player for the kingdom of God in this part of the world. I believe that now just as I did in October when, when we came here, just as I did in February when I talked to you about the vision for the church, I still believe that God's plan is not changed and His plan will win out. His work, the Lord dealt with Malchus and with Peter here. Look at this. To Peter, Put your sword away. Now's not the time. To Malchus, let me heal you. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them who are of a broken heart, and he saveth such as are of a contrite spirit. Church, what I'm trying to say to you is very simple. Whether you are the one who is hurting right now, or whether you are the one who has done some hurting the Lord is still able to minister to both. If you'll go to the Lord, you realize that maybe you've said or done or acted in some ways that, that have caused hurt or pain into somebody's life. The Lord will help you see how to put the sword away and to change your ways. If you're the one that has been hurt like Malchus, the Lord's able to heal those wounds. Folks, I know a lady very well who was abused by her earthly father in every way that a girl could be abused by her father. As she got to be an adult, she had a real hard time with Christianity and a real hard time with God's word because it calls God the Father. And she had such pain in her body because of what her earthly father had done to her. It's a really beautiful testimony that maybe sometime I can share it in its entirety. But can I just say that God healed that woman, completely healed that woman of all the wounds and the pain and the hurt that she was feeling in her life because of what her earthly father had done to her. The pain of being verbally abused, physically abused with fists, and sexually abused by this man. God was able to heal all of those wounds and give her release and give her freedom. I'm telling you, that's not only one. God is able to do that for everyone. Whatever the wound is, maybe you've had a divorce or a terrible marriage or you've been through a bankruptcy or, or you have had any other kind of, of terrible situation in your life and it's caused wounds and scars. Maybe your parents were horrible to you as a child. Maybe they really did wound you and leave you scarred on the inside. God is able to heal those things in you if you'll ask him. If you'll put it in his hands, God is able to bring healing to you. He's willing. Hebrews 5 verse 7 says, When he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Jesus understands. Jesus has suffered. Jesus has been through things as a human being. And he learned obedience in the things that he suffered. And he learned what it means to be hurt and to be wounded, to be rejected of men, to stand on that night 
where he was arrested, having spent over three years pouring in to 12 men, one of them betrayed him, Judas. The other 11, well, 10 of them scattered. And then there's Peter standing around kind of close who the Lord hears deny him. <clears throat> All of the 12 men that were the closest to him on earth have run off. Peter denying him three times the last time with cursing, Scripture says. Oh, he understands what it means to be hurt by other people, but yet he's able to offer to you forgiveness. How do you know? Because he was able to forgive all of them, even Peter, and he let Peter be the preacher on Pentecost, right? Uh, you know, uh, hanging on the cross, the two thieves mocking him and ridiculing him, yet when one near death says, Remember me today when you come into your kingdom. Jesus is able to offer salvation to him. The crowds all around him at the foot of the cross mocking him and telling him, If you really are who you say you are, come down and then we will believe. And they're mocking him and Jesus is able to say, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. God is able to bring healing into our lives. Isaiah 53 and verse 3. He was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrows. And he was acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. You are not approaching a God that is so distant that he can't understand what you're going through. Sometimes people cannot understand what you're going through. But God always can. And if you'll come to him with your pain and your problems, he understands, and he's able to help you. Hebrews 4 and 15 we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Jesus, Jesus is here to bring healing to you this morning. Jesus is there in your living room or your car or wherever it is that you're partaking of this service. Whether it's at 11 o'clock in the morning that you're watching this or Sometime later today or even on Monday that you're watching this video, the power of the Lord is still present to bring healing to you today. We're not here to try to create a victim mentality where you blame all your problems on somebody else. But what we are here to do today is to create a victory mentality where you realize you don't have to be held prisoner by what you've done in the past or by what other people have done to you. But there is healing in the name of Jesus today for all of those things. Whether you were the offendee or whether you were the offender, there's healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. You may need to seek out some reconciliation. We do know that Jesus said if you come and you realize that you have aught with a brother, leave your gift, go to your brother, be reconciled to him, and then come and, and worship so we do know that there's instructions where if there's a problem, you're supposed to go to a person and deal with it. There may, be, there may be a time when you need to make restitution, when you need to make things right. But can I just tell you, the first thing you need to do is come to the Savior and get direction from the Lord, get healing from the Lord, get victory in your own life because Jesus is here to change you today. Lose the right to be right. <laughs> And find the responsibility to be healed and to be reconciled to the Savior today. Heavenly Father, I pray that your word will be powerful and true wherever it's going and whoever's hearing. There are those today who needed to hear this. And I pray, God, that they are going to receive this as the word of the Lord. And to understand that you know all about it. And that you're able to bring healing to them today. Victory and restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, God, that those who have been hurt by the devil. They've been hurt by spiritual leaders. They've been hurt by parents or friends. Whomever the source of the pain is, God, I pray that right now, God, that right now, right now, God, that the spirit of release, the spirit would release that pain and bring healing into their lives today, allowing them to truly say, I forgive the issue. I forgive it and I walk away from it and it is said and it is done and I am healed and I am whole. 
I'm no longer a slave to my past. I'm no longer held down by these wounds in my spirit. But I am healed. I am healed in Christ. And I pray, God, that you would help those of us, even like me, who have been an offender, who have hurt other people with our bad attitudes and our poorly chosen words or our actions or our lack of action, that you would help us, Lord, to realize that we are not an island unto ourselves, and the things we do and the things we say, and it's all important, and it all needs to be under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Help us to do our best to live at peace with all men. We give you thanks for it now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. May the good Lord bless you and keep you today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. God bless.